Now we would be at a miss if we didn't take a close-up view of the orbits because there are seven different bones visible in the orbit of the skull. Let's see if you can get them all. So here's a nice blown up picture of the orbit and we're just gonna we're just gonna go through these. So I think I'm just gonna turn well, so you can see there's a lot to know in there. Let me actually turn that guy off because that is just a lot. So let's go ahead and start going through here. So one of the bones you can see making up the main part of the medial aspect of the orbit is part of the ethmoid bone. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our ethmoid bone on here. The plate of the ethmoid bone. So there it is. So this is the orbital plate portion of the ethmoid bone. So it's making up a big part of the medial aspect of your orbit. So we got ethmoid. Well, of course, up here, you know that you have the frontal bone up here. And so the top, the superior part of the orbit is going to be made up by the frontal bone. So we have ethmoid frontal. And very much of the back of the orbit is part of the sphenoid bone. And so it's actually the orbital surface of the sphenoid bone. But that's not all. We actually have part of the uh, lesser wing of the sphenoid bone as well, right there. So we have lesser wing and greater wing right there. So quite a bit of the orbit is made up by the sphenoid bone. And then what do we have over here? Your zygomatic bone. So Obviously, part of the orbit on the lateral side is made up by the zygomatic bone. So we have ethmoid, frontal, sphenoid, and zygomatic. There's still three to go, right? All right, right. Well, look at this part over here. You can see part of that is made up by the maxilla. So let's go over to the maxilla. Da -da -da. There it is. So a good part of that is made up by the maxilla. So that takes care of five bones. We're missing two. What's going on here? Well, what's this little guy right here? It's a little bone, one of the smaller bones in the body, actually. And that guy is called the lacrimal bone. So where is that lacrimal bone? I know he's around here somewhere. There he is. Lacrimal bone. Ah, okay. So that's six. What are we missing? Huh. This is the trick question one. This is, you can only see a little itty bit about it. But remember the L-shaped bone, the palatine bone? With that long process sticking out, let's go find our palatine bone. Here it is. This is the only bit of the palatine that shows, but that's part of the orbital process of the palatine bone. Remember the rest of it, all well, this part you can see as, as your posterior hard palate of your mouth. So that tells you that's a really odd shaped bone. All right, and we got features. We have features in here too. So let's just review the seven bones that you see in the orbit. Sphenoid, ethmoid, frontal, zygomatic, maxilla, palatine, and lacrimal. So those are the seven bones you see in the orbit. But then we got little areas here. So here's a little hole. So this is your uh, fossa for your lacrimal sac. That's your tear ducts, right? That's where your tears go. And what else do you got here? Oh, you got your inferior orbital fissure going towards the bottom. And at the top, you have a superior orbital fissure, which you can actually see from inside your skull as well. And of course, you're gonna have a place for your optic nerve to go through so that you can see, and that is your optic canal going through there. And then we actually have some other little holes in here. So um, look at this, infraorbital canal, is that little guy down there. And what else do we got down here? Um, well, I think we have another foramen in here somewhere. Uh -huh posterior ethmoidal foramen. So it's part of the ethmoid bone, but it's towards the back, so it's posterior, which means we also have an anterior ethmoidal foramen. So anterior, posterior. And of course, you got your supraorbital notch up there. Everybody already knows about that. There's your supraorbital notch. And here's another little hole that's going through your zygomatic bone. This is your zygomaticofacial foramen. Weird, huh? There's another one. Whereas you might remember this is your infraorbital foramen. This is your zygomaticofacial foramen. So lots of stuff going on here. Let's see if we can, and of course this over here is your nasal bone. Let's go ahead and turn on, turn everything on. Let's see what we got. Okay, that, you know, that's your maxillary bone and you see how it goes into the orbital. 
This was your infraorbital foramen. That's your zygomatic bone with your zygomaticofacial foramen. This is the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone. That is your lacrimal fossa of your frontal bone. Don't worry too much about that one. Here's your frontal bone with its supraorbital notch. And here's the orbital surface of the frontal bone. We have your anterior ethmoidal foramen and your posterior ethmoidal foramen and the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone. Back here is your optic canal, the lesser orbital part of the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, the orbital surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. So all of that is your sphenoid bone, and you can see how it peeks around out there. And then we got your infraorbital canal, your inferior orbital fissure, and your superior orbital fissure. And then a little bit of the orbital process of the palatine bone right there. Here's the orbital surface of your maxilla. There's your tear duct, your lacrimal sac, your lacrimal bone. And uh, were we missing anything? I think we might have got them all. Of course, your nasal bone's out here, etc. I mean, you already know all this stuff. I think you got it all. Very good. That's the orbital areas. Now, the other thing I want to show you are individual bones, the sphenoid bone, the ethmoid bone. They're really, really interesting. So let's go to the sphenoid bone. It looks just like a bat. Here's a posterior view. Here's a superior view. Unfortunately, I don't have one of these disarticulated uh, sphenoid bones. I wish I did. But check it out. I mean, it looks like a bat or a moth or a butterfly. And so let's learn the different parts of this guy. So obviously, this is your greater wing. And this is your lesser wing up here. We said that the processes at the end are called the anterior clinoid process. And you have your optic canal going through the middle. Here's your hypophyseal fossa and your cella turcica. And what else do we got here? Here's where your foramen rotundum comes out. And there's your foramen ovale. And there's your foramen spinosum. So you can kind of see how they fit into the larger skull. And the very edge of it, which I don't think is labeled here, is your, is your dorsum, uh, dorsum celica. Now looking at the posterior view here, you might remember that this whole thing is your medial pterygoid plate. And the very end of it is called the hamulus of the medial pterygoid plate. Over here is your lateral pterygoid plate. You have a little pterygoid canal right there. And then that whole thing's your sphenoid. This is the body of the sphenoid. And that is your dorsum celli that we were talking about down there. And over here, superior orbital fissure, same one that comes out of your eyeball. So a lot going on there, huh? And let's go ahead and look at the ethmoid bone. That is a freaky looking bone, isn't it? Lots of holes, very lightweight. That keeps it lightweight, but it also keeps it full of air. And so you have ethmoidal sinuses that can get plugged up. Not fun. But remember that cribiform plate that's shown through the cranial cavity of the skull? There it is with its crystagalli that attaches to the dura of the, um, of the brain. All these little spaces are called ethmoidal cells. And there's your middle nasal concha. So remember that comes out through your, your nose here and helps to warm and humidify air. And then your orbital plate of your ethmoid bone that makes up the medial wall of your orbit. And you can actually see where these guys are on there. And finally, your perpendicular plate of your ethmoid, and that makes the upper part of your nasal septum. Very cool bone, is it not? And then, uh, and then the last bone I want to look at up close is the hyoid bone, because this hyoid bone is fits right over the Adam's apple, and it's very cool looking. And you can see it is a place where a lot of muscles insert, not as many originate there, but a lot insert. So we're looking at a lateral view and an anterior view. And basically, we got the body of the hyoid bone from the anterior view, and the greater horn, which means that there's also a lesser horn of the hyoid bone. And that's your hyoid bone. So not too much to know there, but it is an important bone. It guards your Adam's apple. OK, good job. Done with the axial skeleton. Take care.